This video is about the omitting types theorem. Let T be a first order theory. Recall that an n-type over T is a set of first order formulas with three variables x1 up to xn that is satisfiable. That is, T has a model B and an n-tuple of elements of B such that all the formulas hold for this n-tuple. A formula phi isolates P if it implies over T every formula in P. So if a type is isolated by a formula, then this formula fully determines the type. A type is called principal if it is isolated by some formula. Let's have a look at an example. Let B be the structure whose domain are the real numbers and which has the constant one, the binary addition operation and the order then clearly the type of 1 is isolated by the formula x1 equals 1. So the type of 1 is an example of a principal type. Similarly, the type of every rational number is a principal type because we can use the constant 1 and addition to specify a single formula phi with one free variable x1 that holds if and only if x1 equals this rational number. On the other hand, the types of irrational numbers, like square root of 2, are non-principal. In fact, in this example we have uncountably many non-principal types. Because in our example, any two distinct real numbers, r1 and r2, have a distinct one type. To see this, note that between r1 and r2 there is a rational number, q. So using the constant 1 and addition and the order, we can cook up a formula that says x1 is larger than q. And this formula is then satisfied by r2, but not by r1, showing that r1 and r2 have a different type. Our example structure also has types that are omitted. That is, types that are not realized. For example, the type that contains for every natural number n the formula x is larger than n, where n is written out 1 plus 1 plus 1 and so on n times, then every finite subset of these formulas is satisfiable in our structure. So this is indeed a type. But of course, this type is not realized in the structure B. I claim that all the types that are not realized in B cannot be principal. And this is a general observation. All principal types of a complete theory T must be realized in every model of T. To see this, suppose that the formula Psi isolates the type P. Then the sentence exists X Psi of X union T is satisfiable. And since T is complete, this sentence must be part of T. So every model satisfies this sentence. So every model has an element A such that Psi of A. And A then realizes the type P. The omitting types theorem can be viewed as a converse of this observation. If a type P is not principal, that is, if it is not isolated by a formula, then it can be omitted. That is, there exists a model of T that omits B. For formally stating the omitting types theorem, we assume that tau is a countable signature, T is a satisfiable tau theory, and P is a non-principal n-type of T. Then, T has a model that omits P. That is, a model that does not realize P. For example, suppose that B is again our structure whose domain is the real numbers with one plus and the order. And suppose that T is the theory of B, which is complete, of course. Then the substructure of B with domain Q is also a model of T. And the type of irrational numbers, such as square root of two in B is omitted in A. To prove the omitting types theorem, we will use the compactness theorem, which is used in almost every proof in model theory. And we also use Tarski's test. 
Tarski's test is a test whether a given substructure A of a given structure B is in fact an elementary substructure. Tarski's test states that it suffices to verify that every formula with parameters from A which is satisfiable in B is also satisfiable by an element of A. In other words, we must be able to find witnesses in A for existentially quantified variables. Our proof strategy now is as follows. We will work with a larger signature that contains countably many new constant symbols. That is, constant symbols that do not appear in tau. Let rho be the set of all the new constant symbols. We now construct a tau union rho theory, T star, which contains T and countably many new sentences, theta 0, theta 1, and so on, and has the following properties. First of all, T star should have a model, B. For this step, we will use the compactness theorem. Moreover, the set of all elements of B denoted by some of the new constant symbols from rho must be an elementary substructure, A. Here we will use Tarski's test. Finally, we will make sure that A omits P. Since A is an elementary substructure of B, it is in particular a model of T star, and by dropping the constant symbols, we obtain a tau structure, which is a model of T that omits P. We construct the new sentences theta 0, theta 1, and so on by induction. First, fix an enumeration, phi 0, phi 1, and so on, of all tau union rho formulas phi of x. Let d0, d1, and so on be an enumeration of rho to the n. Theta 0 is defined to be the tautological sentence exists x, x equals x. For odd indices 2i plus 1, we choose a constant symbol from rho, which does not occur in the previously defined sentences theta 0 up to theta 2i. Define theta 2i plus 1 to be the sentence that states if there exists an x such that phi i of x, then phi i holds for the constant c. In other words, we make sure that c is a witness for phi i, if such a witness exists. Clearly, t union all the thetas that we have defined so far is satisfiable. For even indices 2i plus 2, let di be the n-tuple of constants e1 up to en. The goal of this step is to make sure that di does not realize p. I will explain how to do this on the next page. But note that this proof has an interesting structure that makes it easy to remember. In our proof strategy, we have seen two tasks, making sure that the theory has a certain elementary substructure and making sure that the substructure avoids p, omits p. Each of the two tasks has infinitely many subtasks. For each formula, we have to make sure that there are witnesses in the intended substructure. And for each candidate that could realize P, we have to make sure that P is not realized by this candidate. So what we do to deal with all these tasks is that we alternate between our to-do lists. In the odd stages, we do something from one of the to-do lists and in the even stages, we do something from the other to-do list. And if we then run forever, all tasks will be dealt with. In order to make sure that di does not realize p, we proceed as follows. We first define a tau formula psi with three variables x1 up to xn by taking a conjunction of theta 0, theta 1, and so on until theta 2i plus 1. Then we replace the constant ei by the variable xi. We replace all other occurrences of constant symbols from rho in the formula by a new variable xc for a constant symbol c and in rho. And, and finally, we existentially quantify all variables xc. Clearly, t union psi is satisfiable. 
since the type P is non-principal by assumption, there exists a formula phi in P such that T has a model B with an n-tuple little b such that B satisfies psi of little b, but not phi. Otherwise, in every model of T, psi would imply every formula in P, and hence psi would isolate P, in contradiction to the assumption that P is non-principal. Now we define theta 2i plus 2 to be not phi of di. So in every model of this sentence, di has no chance to realize p. Note that t together with all the theta that we have defined so far has a model, namely the expansion of the structure b defined above, where the n-tuple of constants di denotes the n-tuple b. The theory t star, which is the union of t, with all the sentences theta 0, theta 1, and so on until infinity, has a model b, by compactness of first order logic. The elements denoted by the constant symbols from rho are the domain of an elementary substructure a of b, by Tarski's test, because we have forced all the necessary witnesses into our model in the odd steps of the construction. Finally, a omits p because we have eliminated all candidates of n-tuples that could realize p in the even steps of the construction. This finishes the proof. Observe that we can easily modify the proof to omit two types at once, or finitely many types at once. We can even omit countably many types at once, since we can even deal with countably many infinite to-do lists simply because omega times omega is still countable. We are almost at the end of this video. I would like to show you an interesting immediate consequence of the omitting types theorem that we will also need in the next video. A structure is called atomic if it only realizes principal types. All non-principal types must be omitted. The consequence I would like to present is about complete satisfiable theories that have only countably many n types for every n. Such theories have atomic models. This is clear, since we have seen that we can find models that omit countably many non-principal types. So by our accountability assumption, we can simply omit all the non-principal types. Atomic models have many nice properties. I will mention one that will be important later. If we have two countable atomic structures that have the same theory, then they must be isomorphic. This can be shown by a back and forth argument, which I leave to the reader. In the previous video, we have seen that saturated structures realize many types, even over constants, and, and that saturated structures of the same cardinality and the same theory are unique up to isomorphism. In this video, we have seen that atomic structures realize few types, only the types that cannot be omitted. And again, this assumption makes structures, countable structures of the same theory, unique up to isomorphism. In the next video, we will look at a nice class of structures that are simultaneously saturated and atomic.